and we're live. Welcome everyone to another episode of Coffee with Cartels. Hey Marika, how are you doing? Hey, hey Karen, I'm well. Hello everybody. Hi there. Um, on this cold winter um, Wednesday afternoon, um, as you can see, we are still live streaming from our homes and probably will be doing so for the next couple of weeks. Well, let's see what Cyril has to say on, on Sunday when he or when he speaks to us again. Yes. <laughs> Folks, as you all know, um, the month of July, we have dedicated to champions what it takes to be one. The past few weeks, have, we have seen KZN and Gauteng communities come together to be champions for their neighborhoods and towns. My brother was one of those who fed 100 volunteers, 80 policemen protecting their town in Durban for days. Good things can still happen in the midst of chaos, and my brother Leonard is my hero. Guys, today, sorry, folks, today we have a great lineup for you. We will be talking to Kim Wallace from Heart Bay Riding Center, who is a long-standing donor of ours. We will showcase our zero tolerance policy, um, which you don't want to miss. And stay tuned for our down memory lane feature, where our very own Megan White met Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal. If you have just tuned in, you are watching Coffee with Cartels, and we are delighted to have you with us. As Karen said, we are delighted to have you. Please like and follow us on Facebook and YouTube, and don't feel shy to hit the share button. <laughs> Please um, tell us in the comments section where you're tuning in from. We'd love to meet you. <clears throat> Thanks, Marika. Folks, we are very lucky to have Kim Wallace with us today from the Heart Bay Riding Centre, which has been around since 1986 and is one of the few riding schools who still instill in their young riders to give back to those less fortunate horses than theirs. I met Kim years ago when I first started at Cartels and loved going to their birthday party each year to witness the carousel event, which is dedicated specifically to us. Seeing the kids so excited for the event and the trouble that put that sorry that they put in is incredibly heartwarming. The kids all fight who will be riding our adopted cart horses that have found their forever home, forever homes with Kim. And Kim has also donated over 25,000 Rand over the last few years. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Welcome, Kim, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk to us today. And Hi, um, why you're such an avid supporter of ours. Hi, <laughs> hey girls. Hi, Hi. Hi Kim. <laughs> Hi, Kim. So how, how long have you been around horses for? Um, I started riding when I was about eight, but my mom uh, introduced me to riding. She rode her whole life. Yeah. Okay. And how long have you known about cart horse and why did you decide to get involved with us? We're very lucky that uh, Penny Lancaster, who's with Cart Horse, uh, rides here, and she's amazing. Um, and, yeah, we like to support her. We've always liked to do our bit for horses that are less fortunate. Um, okay. And over the years, we've always tried to give um, horses that don't have a great life a better home. Oh, that's fantastic. We can see your your um, your kids in the background there. Why is it important as a horse? Hi. <laughs> owner and rider. <laughs> yeah. Hi. So we should we just repeat the question? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, did you hear the question? Why do you think it's so important as a as a horse rider and owner to support an organisation such as Cartors? 
I think for everybody, we need to be aware that there's so many animals out there that need extra care and love and attention. And as a rider, it's really important for us all to put back and give these animals a better, a better home and give them the care and support we can. So any um, additional support to Cartwheels and anything we can do, we know really goes a very long way. Oh, thank you. Wow, absolutely. And and the fact that you are sitting with your your um, youngsters behind you is also phenomenal. It really, really is. And then Kim, because you've been following us for such a long time, what, what difference have you seen um, in the last few years with Cartwheels, the improvements that you've seen? I think Cartwheels has done an unbelievable, unbelievable job in the Cape Flats and areas. A few years ago, we used to go and look for for ponies and school horses because the the horses they just have amazing temperaments. So many of them, okay. um, and looking in the, you, it's not that easy to go around in the Cape Flats and look for ponies and any areas like that these days. Um, so we saw while we were in those areas, you can see the cart horses used to be quite skinny and these days they're in great condition their feet are great you can see their owners have been educated to look after their ponies a whole lot better so it's very noticeable looking at the carties and so on that it's just a completely different scene yeah cartos has done amazing amazing things oh thank you so much <laughs> we we know you're standing in the stables and we're very excited to see violet and lady easter that you recently adopted um yeah. What what made you decide to adopt from cart horse? Well, my we I think we've always tried to adopt either from the SPCA or cart horse, and um, mm. my daughters are always very pushy about making sure we've got horses from cart horse or SPCA. So Lara went off with Katie, one of our instructors, to cart horse and saw Violet and Lady Easter there and insisted that we try and give them a better home. Oh, that's wonderful. You can you can you can turn the camera and we can we can see them. Okay, there's um whoops, there's Lady Easter. Hello, Hi. Billy. <laughs> and this is Ashley. Ashley, Ashley, Hi, Ashley. Hi, schooling her Hi. and doing amazing things and teaching her so much. And that is Phoebe and Chloe and Toby. I don't know if you can see them. Hi. And here yes, is yeah. There's little Violet. Oh, gorgeous so ever. Pony, yeah, Chloe's done amazing things with her. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful yeah. to see. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. Tommy, the little Tommy down here, she looks after little Miss. Oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, what, what did, what advice do you give to your youngsters and how, how do you help them become champions? Um, I think it's really important for all of our kids here that they've got to realize that they're a team with their horse. They're not just a machine. They've got to look after their horses and bond with them, appreciate them for the amazing animals they are. They've, yeah, they've got to get involved with the care of their horses. Absolutely. Valid, valid oh, lessons, you. Kim. That's wonderful. <laughs> and then also, how do you keep the kids grounded in the pressures of competing? I think for us, it's not just about uh, competing in the red mm. reset. It's about loving your horse, looking after your horse and doing it as a team and enjoying it. Um, the winning and the losing is all part of the game. Um, the red reset is just, uh, just a bonus when it comes along. Absolutely. <laughs> life, life lessons to be learned. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you and the girls want to... Not all plain sailing. Lots of ups and downs make them stronger. Of Always with horses. <laughs> <laughs> and then do you girls have something to tell our viewers out there about something about 67? <laughs> I think all of us, all of us are going to say together, 67, Kato 67 and a few zeros goes a long way. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <clears throat> Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks, girls. Thanks, everyone. Love seeing you. Thank Kim, you so, thank you so much. much. Yeah, thank you so much for always thinking of us first when you need to adopt a pony. 
and all for what you do for us. Um, folks, please visit the, the writing center in, center in Hard Bay and also meet Riley the pig, which I was quite nervous of when I first met him in the beginning, but he's quite harmless. Um, Henry the sheep, which we just heard, doesn't like to sleep outside, he sleeps inside. And Lola there's the goat. Lola. Oh, there's, there's Lola. Lola. <laughs> there's Lola. Oh, it's adorable. And also they have the most fluffy chickens and bunnies and go and meet the rest of the warm and very welcoming family Kim has created over the past years. Thank you very, very much for all you guys do for Kartos and to everybody out there, 67 and a few zeros goes a long way to these special animals. Thank you Thanks so much for your time, Kim. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> I want to like a bunch of young oh, girls. That is so lovely. Way, mm, and I love the way each of them have got a horse and they need to take care and look after them. And as you can see, they um, are very, very well looked after. And it's, it's incredibly heartwarming that Kim have given all these, these horses the most amazing homes. Uh, but I have to say, every time I've seen Lady Easter at the Heart Bear Riding Center, she's always eating. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I remember the photos you took. She had her nose in her in her exactly, manger. Exactly. <laughs> but folks, up next we'll be telling you about how the SPCA and law enforcement stepped in to help us with this confiscation in Freedom Farm. We are always champions for the cart horses and do what it takes. In November 2013, we launched a major rescue operation rescuing two, two mares, Eve and Rosie, and three youngsters, Beauty, Lucky, and Storm. The community of Freedom Farm actually alerted us to their situation, which reiterates the relationships we had fostered in the carting community over the years. They were taken to the Recovery and Rehabilitation Center in Gordons Bay for rehabilitation. Two weeks after their arrival, Eve, the precious mare, gave birth to a beautiful filly called Midnight Girl, a.k.a. Nelly, in memory of Nelson Mandela, who passed away on 5 December 2013. Join us now for this amazing rescue.
Oh my goodness, Marika, this rescue still brings tears to my eyes. And as you can see, these horses are just so confused as they were actually at all semi-wild. Um, but once they got to the R&R, &R, they seemed to be more relaxed after being put into our paddocks. And I'm sure they, they knew that they, were, that they were safe now. But folks, this is not the end of the story. There is more. Between November and March of the following year, the owner was issued letters requesting that he pay costs for this rescue and adheres to strict regulations in keeping of horses. He did not come forward with payment, and in March, Eve, Rosie, Beauty, Lucky, and Storm, and Little Midnight Girl were placed legally in our cave. Thank goodness. Then, in May, we received a summons the owner was taking us to court to get his horses back. He actually maintained that there was no neglect and we had taken them illegally. Enter Nikki Guernica, a lawyer at Shepstone and Wiley Attorneys who presented his lawyer with evidence of the rescue that we acted within the law as we always, always do and the owner had contravened numerous provisions of the Animal Protection Act. We then placed a counter claim for costs. At the beginning of October, we received notification that the owner was withdrawing the case. As you can see, all the horses were successfully adopted out and deservedly living a life of luxury. Folks, that is what I love about working for cart horse is that we make a plan, do things by the book and take horses out of harm's way. That we do. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we would like to thank those donors who have donated their 67 rand and more in most cases to our Mandela Day requests, like the, like the Greater Lynn Frey Civic Association did this week and asked all Lynn Frey residents to do the same. You are our champions for this campaign. So far, we have raised about 12,000 rand for our shavings drive. So many horses after the flooding are sleeping nice and warm and snusser because of you. Thank you very much. 
Cardinals Protection Association offer free shavings all year round, and especially now in winter, that the horse's stables are warm and dry. So please consider donating 67 rand, pounds, dollars, or even zeros, I mean euros, to our project for the month of July, as it costs us over 100,000 rand, yes, over 100,000 rand a year to keep these horses sleep tight at night. As Megan says to her family, the secret to a good night's sleep is a well-made bed. <laughs> but we're not just here for fun and games, people. You know we are here to raise more funds. Karen and I are the fundraisers, and that's our jobs. <laughs> so <laughs> I introduce you to my favorite method of donation. I think it's the simplest, the easiest for today's times. You simply install the app on your phone. If you've used it to pay, then you'll know it's easy. For donating, it's even easier because you don't even need the QR code. But if you do want to pay using the QR code, it's everywhere on our social media, on our website. You can find it, but you don't need the QR code. You simply go into more and then you search for donate, search for cart horse, and then you can donate any amount. And please remember if you're donating, thanks to watching this program, remember to use the reference hashtag coffee so that we know what the donation is allocated to. And please remember to send us your details so that we can send you a Section 18A certificate. Up next is our usual visit with the office cats. <laughs> Long before Batman and Sylvester shared the duties in the office, there was another little cat who managed to do it all on her own. How Spickles arrived on the property, nobody knows, but she lived underneath a container for quite a while before she was coaxed into the feed room. There, she had a single kitten in a pot plant which unfortunately did not make it. After she was spayed, she took to her duties very seriously. Spickles had a paw in everything. She kept a watch over general admin. She made photocopies, checked the staff register, made sure the money was counted correctly, and she helped out with writing newsletters and annual reports. Spickles, if you mess up my annual reports, I promise you... She was, of course, the original chair thief. Spickles and Carl had a very special bond, and she could always count on him to spare her a special treat. But she had time to get a head scratch, or a chin scratch, or some lunch from everyone. Sadly, one morning we found Spickles had crossed the rainbow bridge and she was laid to rest in the garden she so loved and we miss her every day. Oh, Spicky. Oh my goodness, Marika, your videos are just beautiful and that tribute to Spickles was just absolutely glorious and we, we miss her so much. Her death was so unexpected. But then I think she actually left way for Sylvester and Slinky to to move in and um, that she will forever be within our hearts. Of course she will. Up next, join us down memory lane. In July 2014, Megan was invited to attend the 7th International Colloquium on Working Equids hosted by World Horse Welfare at the Royal Holloway University of London. Megan spent three very inspiring days with over 154 delegates from 28 countries across the world discussing the way forward for equine welfare. Megan's conclusion, conclusion from this colloquium, which I have to mention, and yes, we are allowed to brag, Compared to the welfare issues in the rest of the world, our working cart horses are doing very well. In Cape Town, the economic value of the working cart horse is recognized by the cart horse owners and even local government. We have legislation which protects their welfare 
and our cart horse owners have accessible services which ensure their health and well-being. All of this has made us the successful project that we are. World Horse Welfare Project Leader for South Africa said that she wishes she could just take cart horse and place us in all her projects across the world. Oh, wow, that's amazing. I wish, I'm so jealous. I wish I could have visited the muse with her, the royal muse. Look amazing. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> Next time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, now we thank all our sponsors. <laughs> we would like to thank Book Signs for our brand new recovery and rehabilitation center signage to to Intando, which means love. And they do continuously show us the love, who is also a South African certified nonprofit organization who creates a very unique link between tourism and community development projects such as ours. And to ICW Pharmacy Script Management, who donated much needed hand sanitizer, which we handed out to all the cartels owners. And last but not least, to the Greater Linfrey Civic Association community for their generous donations. Folks, please, please also support our supporters. On that, on that note, please remember to like and share our page as we need all the support we can get during this difficult time. Until next Wednesday, be safe and take care. Bye, Marika. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>